the case has been made that justice hasn't occurred yet. Um, you know, there's Julie's made, you know, cited data, there's um, bits of data cited um, through the documents that you'll see or have seen. Um, you know, we could draw down on myriad uh, examples. I just picked two today, 13% um, uh, national gender pay gap at the moment. Um, women lead uh, to your the data that you used, Julie, but the work that our colleagues at ACOS and UNSW have done, um, that women led, led households uh, experience nearly twice the rate of poverty uh, as male led households. So, you know, we're clearly not there. And uh, to some of the points that Alex made, uh, you know, it's disappointing to researchers that rational uh, evidence doesn't change things. Um, <laughs> Disappointing to journalists as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, uh, we definitely do need culture change, and I think we, we we also need to be brave and persistent. And I think that, that I think the brave part probably speaks to many of you because you've come to this event. But the persistent bit, and I think a lot of the work we do through Melbourne Social Equity Institute and our colleagues do, is is trying to change uh, intractable problems that involve. Our, our polity or our citizenship and our, therefore our policy makers to also move and change. Um, and I was reminded of that when I was talking last night to my father and a friend of his who were both very wealthy uh, men in their uh, late 70s, early 80s. And, you know, being brave with them doesn't work. Being persistent, being, <laughs> being um, incremental is what works. Um, the other thing I guess I'd wanted to observe is that uh, while policy, you know, we do, we currently have some policy shifts that we're seeing. We clearly have deep polarisation across our political um, uh, parties and, and ideologies and that is being politicised and used and so we're, in, we're at risk of, you know, moving two steps forward, one step back. But the other observation to make, of course, is that philanthropy, like all of the not-for-profit sector, is private activity. It's private activity that exists to create public and community benefit, but it's private activity. So um, I would say I'm currently doing the uh, direct, direct, doing the expert advisory work for the National Not-for-Profit not Sector Development Blueprint, um, and uh, the, the philanthropic sector is probably the sector that has, beyond regulation, has the least contact with government unless it strategically chooses to do so. So, you know, there's huge influence um, in this room and in the foundations and um, philanthropic resources that you convene. Um, they're not necessarily being informed by policy, and so that means we need to be looking to culture, to relationships, to the um, networks of influence that we have um, broadly across the different uh, sectors. There.